Happy New Year's everybody. I hope you all had a good holiday for Christmas and New Year's. I sure did bringing in this new year and I can't wait to see what 2023 brings for myself and for all of you. We are back again for another image breakdown. And just to give you guys a heads up, we will be doing one of these every month at the beginning of the month. Each of these breakdowns will cover my images and just my approach as to how I capture the image and my editing in regards to, you know, Photoshop, Lightroom, and finally delivering the photo to my client. And by the way, we are officially 11 months away from this year's PMRE conference. It's an amazing conference for any of you out there who are photographers that want to get into architecture, interior design, or real estate, luxury real estate, doesn't matter what it is. But if you want to be a part of that industry, this is the place you have to be. It's an event for individuals to come along and network and learn from so many professionals in this industry. It's an amazing event. Whether you're just there and you're curious or you're a professional, you want to better your skill, this is the place to be. Last year, I had the opportunity along with Wayne Capilli and Tony Colangelo to host a two-day workshop on capturing luxury spaces and also doing an on-stage presentation reviewing your images for the audience. I hope to see you all there in November. Make sure to put it on your calendar. All right, without further ado, let's get to this image breakdown. All right, so here's our first image here. This is a kitchen shot I did for an interior designer in Las Vegas. Now, if we notice here on this kitchen, there's a couple of things we need to worry about. What you don't see on the left side is a window over here that's casting light in this direction, right? On top, we have some overhead lights. You can kind of see it in these reflections, which are kind of producing this yellow glow from that light. We got the blue light coming, also affecting this the wood panels here along the, um, the back wall and on the uh, all these islands so there's a couple little things here we have to tackle in regards to how we want to approach in shooting this and delivering the final product to our client now i always like motivated lighting and i always say the thing that separates flat lighting from motivated lighting is direction right so what can we do here to enhance this photo to give us some direction rather than it being a flat looking image so pretty much my approach is I'm going to capitalize on the direction from where that window is actually uh, when the, where actually the window light is coming from. So my goal is to since the window is here on the left side, I'm going to shoot to aim my light and my shadows to come in from this top left direction. So ideally what I want is a fall off and a gradient fall off where this top right area is brighter, but this area is falling off little bit into darkness you know could you shoot this ambient and try to edit it in photoshop yeah you could but why you know give yourself all that work you know let's just make things easier for ourselves add some light onto this which will solve the the color information for the the wood and also the cabinets inside this island so it's not that difficult i mean it, it may look like if you encounter a scene like this you may you may think like you know how many light pops am i doing how many flashes am i doing what direction am I doing? You know, just sit back, look at the scene, analyze it, and just ask yourself if you can already get, if you've already had the experience to develop your eye to see what you already want for the end result, then just shoot for that, right? I already know that I want the light coming in from the, that top left, and I'm gonna aim that my light and my shadows are, are gonna create that look I'm achieving to do, right? So I'm not trying to just flash and go crazy and light this whole thing and make it look just like another flat image with just better color representation. No, I want to light this so that we have some directionality to the light, which will also enhance the mood of this photo. So let's take a look at the final image. So as you can see, taking a boring flat image and then adding a little bit of light helps to bring this a mood that our clients are really going to appreciate and love. So very simple one light that's all it took was just one light source coming in from this top left direction gave us the shadows that we needed for this scene as you can see there is a fall off here coming from left to right and that fall off is giving us a beautiful gradient from the top left to the bottom right of this image creating that nice mood that we're looking for i don't need that everything in this scene needs to be bright I like that things are in shadow. You know, it gives you a mystery. You know, it's, it, you don't have to just show everything. Tease them and let let them have a hint and, and and guess like what's there. I'm okay that this 
back area is a little bit in shadow, but there's still detail there. The main elements in this scene are, are in light, and that's what's most important. We have the appliances here on the right side in light. We have the wood area here perfectly in color, in light. We have the nice texture represented represented well as well on the right side. And even though this island here is in shadow, you still can appreciate the texture and color of that, even though it's in shadow. And as well, look at the beautiful fall off we have here going from this island coming from the left side of the scene, the scene all the way here to this right side and just creating this beautiful light fall off. I love it. It's, it's a very simple approach to photographing a scene. Just instead of flashing and going crazy with your light, just choose one direction and just light everything from there. So that being said, let's take this into Photoshop so you can see how simple it was and how little time it took me to get this photo on site. So as you can see here, here's our Photoshop file. And let me just break this down. We'll just take this layer by layer so you can see how it was built up. Literally, look at this. Here's our ambient shot. I'm sorry, no, this is not our ambient shot. This is our base flash shot. So going with the base flash shot, obviously you can see I'm bouncing and lighting from this top left corner over here. And that light is producing that fall off coming from left, from the top left to the bottom right of this image creating that beautiful light that I was looking for off the bat before I even popped my camera out or started flashing. So I knew this is what I was looking for. And all I needed after that was just fixing this hot, this hot spot in the, the, uh, the scene. So what did I do? Just bringing another light and that's it. So with that, if you just notice here, this is a light from behind the camera. And the whole purpose of this shot is just to fix that hot spot that was there in the top left corner of that frame. And once we mask that in, you can see before, after, and that's it. Two shots, literally two shots. I did, I, I did do a bracketed shot of this um, as a safety, but I didn't need any of those. Just two shots with, with the foresight of knowing exactly what I wanted to do for the final result helped me to just save time on site. They're shooting this property, I'm sorry, shooting this scene for my client so I can move on to the next scene and do the same thing as well. So really quick, if, if you notice, I mean, look, we have our other shots here. These are some ambience, but we don't, there's no need for any of that. Very simple. All we need is just two shots. Basic are one light coming from the top left to the bottom right of this image. And then we have our other layer here, which is our fixer layer, just to fix that hot spot, And we are done. Save this in Photoshop, bring it back into Lightroom in a couple little tweaks. So this is before, after, as you can see, I did a couple, a little bit of uh, leveling things out. And if you just want to see exactly where I did the transform tool here, I just put a, a couple grid lines here on the left vertical and also on this Island, just to give me a good, um, leveled out image. And then other than that, we just, Drop the highlights of hair, added a little bit of whites, blacks, clarity, and we are done. It literally probably took on site, let me think, maybe five to 10 minutes to flash that, capture it, back at the computer, maybe another five minutes to edit that in Photoshop, and another couple minutes to just add these little tweaks in Lightroom, and we're done. I mean, I sent this to my client, and he loves it. You can just see, like, going from that boring, basic ambient shot with the mixed lighting of that sunlight and the interior lighting and then translating it into something like this. I mean, night and day, and it just makes you feel so good for what you get to deliver for your clients. So my whole goal with this is before you guys even start shooting, take a step back, look at your scene and determine what the end goal is before you even start shooting or flashing because just that extra time you take to, already have a vision of what you want will help you on site to just not waste time getting extra things that you don't need. Just focus on exactly that end goal you're looking for and, and go for it. Just shoot that and then bring it back to the computer, finish it up and send it off to your client. And it's true what they say, time is money. We don't want to waste more time than we need to on these jobs because they, these can be big projects and every little moment, every little second counts, right? We want to 
be in and out of there as soon as we can, but we also want to produce quality work for our clients. So having a foresight as to where you want the end goal of this image to be will help you on site to be quick, fast, and get this stuff turned around quickly for your client. All right, let's take a look at the next image. So here we have a master closet. Obviously, as you can see, it's a lot of light coming in because of the time of day. So because of the way the house is facing, there was always going to be a hard light source coming into this scene. That being said, how do we alleviate this? Flash. Why? Because with flash, we can help kill that ambient light and showcase more of what's inside this space to really highlight its features and also the textures and the cor correct color information for you know, th these uh, wood cabinets and the, the, the floor and ceiling as well. So let's take a look at just real quick the whole process as to what I'm looking for when I'm shooting this one. So obviously, where's our light source coming from? Number one, right here, these windows, right? That being said, I want to make sure that all my light is coming in from that direction which means if the light is coming in from those windows, I'm definitely going to have light fall off here on these cabinets and a little bit of light fall off here, right? Not, I don't want to make it too dark, but enough to let them know where the direction, the direction of this light is coming from. Other than that, we do have over, some overhead lights here, right? And this little light fe feature here, which we can use that to say that light is coming down and that might be why some of this floor is lit, right? And that's pretty much it. All we need to do is when we light this thing, just make sure that we're lighting from the direction of the windows and we will get a, a, a shot as well from behind the camera. But the whole purpose of that is to fill any um, areas where we, want to, we need to fix any hot spots, ceilings, um, removing ourselves out from the frame, things like that, just to make sure we have some things to help alleviate that back on the computer. So let's take a look at the final version of this shot and then we'll bring it into Photoshop so you can see how it was built up. So as you can see here, what a difference, right? We killed all that ambient light. We have a little bit of glare still coming in here, but it's not overdone where we don't get any information in that floor. With the light, look at it. We got it coming out of these windows, right? And we get that perfect fall off that we're looking for. We get shadow information over here, right? Just bringing in that directionality to that light. And even here, even though we have detail, but this foreground element is in shadow, which I like. Just reiterating that direction of where that light source is coming from. And other than that, we also got some information here in these back cabinets along by those windows. And look at the floor. I mean, how nice is that floor? You can, you can clearly see the texture, the marble design there, and we killed any ambient light that's causing any kind of, you know, color cast and all that kind of stuff. One thing if you guys noticed in the ambient shot previously, it was right here was a ceiling light fixture that was part of the, the actual ceiling design. The client didn't like the yellow in there, so they asked me to actually remove that. So very simple, desaturated, and, and done. Or using flash to overpower it and just kill that ambient light completely. So let's take this into Photoshop real quick and so you guys can see how we built this up in Photoshop and the final little touches in Lightroom. And same thing like before, when you get into a scene, before you start popping off lights, just ask yourself, what is the end goal you're looking to accomplish? And then from there, start lighting for that end goal. No need to shoot unnecessary light and all these additional shots and waste more time. Just focus on all the elements you need to accomplish your goal so you can be in and out of there as fast as possible. Time is money, trust me. All right, so here we are in Photoshop, and as you can see, here's our base starting layer. This layer is a flash shot from behind the camera. The whole purpose of this is just to get information, um, a flat base layer that's color accurate, so we have something to start to build up this image. Our next layer we have here, if you see, I'm actually standing over here, bouncing light on the ceiling. I dropped the opacity down, but the whole purpose of this was just getting light on that foreground element to cast some shadow. So if I take that off and on, you can see the difference that makes just by adding that directionality from the, the light to cast some shadow over here on this. So as we mask that on, here's the before and after. So as you can see, 
flat and now we have some directionality to it coming from the windows that you see in the scene. Next. So I'm over here flashing on the right side of the image and the whole po point of this is lighting the ceiling up here so it bounces down to the left and creating some nice color and uh, texture information here for the left side of this uh, closet scene. And with that, we just put a mask on that. And if you see off and on, we have had, we got some nice texture there. And on top of that, if you notice, look at the beautiful shadow that we have coming off of here, representing exactly where this window is at. And because of the window over there, that's where the, the shadow fall off should be coming from. So here we go with the flat image and just adding that shadow just helps to really set this into the scene. All right, here's our next image. It's just the ceiling. So all we're doing here is just getting, as you can see, because we're bouncing light, we have all these hot spots. We're just trying to eliminate that. So by just adding an ambient shot here and masking it in, we get rid of all that and just have a nice clean ceiling. Now, if you remember, my client didn't like this yellow lighting over here. So we want to kill that. First, I'm just going to add a curves just to help set this ceiling into this whole scene. Second, there's my ambient and I'm sorry, there's my hue saturation there just to kill that yellow on the scene. And lastly, we're just going to look at that view, grab an ambient shot, which is this one, and just mask it out and bring in that view and add a little bit of levels to just brighten it up just a tad. And we're done. Pretty simple. It didn't take us out long. Like I said, the end goal was understanding when we're on site to know what we wanted, which was pretty much direction coming from the where these windows are at and making sure we have some decent light fall off on these foreground elements, which is the right and left side of these um, closets and also this foreground island over here as well. So after that, we just save it, bring it back into Lightroom and a couple little tweaks, really simple texture clarity. And if you see here, Here's our guide. So we have the bottom of this uh, island area and the right and the left side of these doors coming into the scene. And with that said, literally, like I said, doesn't take that long at all. When you're on site, just get there, look at the scene, understand, okay, I see this closet. I see where the light source should be coming from. I'm going to pop left, right behind the camera as a safety and bracket and bracket as well. So we have that information just in case our flash doesn't get to certain areas. We always have brackets to make sure that we have something to fall back on. And that's it. We're done. Bring it into, into Photoshop, Lightroom, and deliver this to our client. All right. Now, I have one more image to show you guys. And this one's just a little bit different. The past two images were flash, but this one is just pure ambient. I just want to show you that building up your skill and coming to conferences like PMRE, you'll be able to learn the techniques you need to not only shoot flash, but also to just shoot ambient and deliver a nice edited ambient image. And I don't mean sending it off to an editor. I mean having the skill set that you can do it all on your own and then deliver that final image to your client for them to appreciate as well. So let's take a look at this last image, which is pure ambient and how we built that up as well. All right, so here's our last image. This is our base ambient shot. As you can see, we have a couple things we have to worry about. We have a nice white space here. But with that comes some challenges. Now, as you can see, we have some interior lights happening here. That's bringing in some light direction coming in from here. We got some chandeliers over here, casting light down there. We also have this open um, sliding door, which is bringing in this sunlight, casting this blue light onto the floor. And we have a lot of hot lights and also sunlight coming in from this direction as well into the scene, right? I think with a scene like this, you have to ask yourself, do I even need flash? I mean, most of all the information is there. If you just bracket and edit it all together, you can accomplish a decent looking image without having to add all this unnecessary lighting to just um, a scene that doesn't really need it, right? So let's take a look at the final image of this one and how we tackle some of these areas that um, we encounter with just the ambient shot alone. So here's my final edit for this ambient shot. We didn't really need to have crazy lighting for this specific space. Maybe in, in other areas in this unit, lighting was used because it, it was needed.
but there was plenty of ambient light in this shot that we didn't really need to add any more supplemental lighting to it. I think the ambient shot alone did a decent enough job. We just need to add some finesse to it and just clean it up, make it look good. So as you can see here, we have some decent representation of this space. If you notice, we killed that blue light coming in from that sunlight, as well as we got rid of some of that orange glow coming in from these light fixtures here and also up top. And on top of that, if you notice, we also fixed all these windows, right? We, we made sure we adjusted our, our uh, ambient brackets and just made mass these in very easily. Just adding some squares here and there. It took seconds to do that, not long at all. And then just making sure that we had good representation of exposure, color, texture, and that's it. I mean, this wasn't an HDR thing. This wasn't um, sending off to an editor. This is doing it all on your own. And that's the whole goal. Like, there's nothing wrong with using an editor. Having an editor is a lifesaver, right? It allows us to be out there shooting and them working. So we're not going back home, wasting time, being away from our family. We want to just shoot and we want to also be able to have the time for the things that we love to do. So, but that being said, having the skill set to know how to edit the photos on your, on your own will be a game changer because what happens when you send your stuff out to an editor, they send it back to you, you deliver it to your client and your client comes back with changes. What are you going to do? Are you going to email your client? I'm sorry. Are you going to email your request to your editor? wait an extra day for them to make those changes and then have your client get those photos? No way, especially when it's a client who needs it right away, you have to be able to have the skill set to be able to tackle their changes and, and request, make those edits and send it back to them that same day or as soon as possible, right? Editors are good, but we can't just rely on them for everything. We still have to build up our own skill set to tackle these issues when it arises and a client needs things done ASAP. Because if we can't and we don't do that, all they're gonna do is go to the next photographer who can do that. So make sure, you know, take the time, go to your conferences, go to your workshops, look on YouTube, whatever it is for you to build up that skill set so you have the tools when it comes to tackling a photo, whether it's sending it off to an editor or making changes for your client so you can do it and make your clients happy. So let's take a look at this image in Photoshop and Lightroom so you can see exactly how I built this all up. So here we are in Lightroom and as you can see, what you're looking at here is a merged DNG file. But to the right of that, we have our bracket shot. So we have seven shots, pretty much here's our base layer and our other information here as far as highlights and shadows goes to get to capture the entire range of this scene. What I usually do is I merge all these together. So pretty much if I take these, select them all, right click, photo merge, HDR. What that does is it creates a huge raw file with information for the highlights and shadows. So you can push and pull those sliders in Lightroom to get this image to look exactly the way you want. Whereas if you just took a single raw image, you may not get that information and start creating some grain and unwanted um, noise and things like that, you know, and, and we want to avoid any of that. We want a clean image and by merging those images together and creating that huge raw file, I'm able to push and pull and make this image exactly the way I want without destroying it. So that being said, that, that raw file that I created is this right here, right? So if you notice, all I did is add a couple changes. Obviously we start with our lens corrections. And then up top, I just dropped the highlights. So let me show you the before real quick. Looks just like our, our regular base raw file. But what you don't know is that in this image, there's a whole bunch more information we have to work with. So with that, we dropped the highlights a little bit. Shadows, whites, kept it the same. Blacks kept it the same. Clarity and texture. And that's it. This is a good starting off point so I can build my image up from here in Photoshop. So what I did first in Photoshop is... We took this, so let me just go here. All right, so here we are in Photoshop. And as you can see, here's our base layer that we tweaked in Lightroom and brought into Photoshop to start off with. Next, this is a curves layer. And the whole point of this is just to make sure our white, our white balance is on point. 
After that, we have a hue saturation layer. Now we're gonna start tackling those color cast issues coming into the scene. So with this on, you can see we're getting rid of some of that yellow coming into the scene. And we just, you know, color picked that area, desaturated it, and that's it. So if you go off and on, look at the ceiling, look at the floor. And, and this is also that same, the same client asking us to remove that ceiling yellow there. They didn't like it for this particular property. So just by adding a hue saturation layer, you can kind of tone down that yellow. Next, we added another hue saturation layer. If you look at the walkway here, you can see we have some blue still coming into the scene. Also here onto this fireplace area. So with that, same thing, we just add a hue saturation layer, desaturate that blue. Next, a little bit of layers, I'm sorry, levels to just help bring some contrast into the scene so it's not so flat. And last, we have our view. We just pretty much edited the ambient shot so we have a good looking view from the outside as far as color, sky, all that good stuff. Pen tooled around the window and put a mask on it and that's it, we are done. So I put it into the group because what I have here is I have this bottom layer here, which is for this exposure. And then the top layer here had its own exposure because the sun was at a different point in the sky these windows were at a, at a brighter exposure. So I just made a different um, edit for that top window and brought that in by itself. So the, with those two in the scene, before and after, what a difference, right? Just adding in that extra information in that view just really helps to give you all the information you need for the interior and exterior of this property. And that's it. We saved this, bring it back into Lightroom. So now we're back in Lightroom and just a couple of little tweaks. Little bit of highlights dropped, shadows, bring in some black for some contrast, texture, clarity, and as well into the tone curve, I just darken the blacks just a hair, not a lot, just a little bit. What I like about this is it really just tar targets the dark areas of the scene. If I go all the way, you can see how we're really just hitting that dark, the darks in the scene, but I didn't want that much. Just a little bit, I had it at negative four, that was just more than enough. And then other than that, all I did was add a little mask. I'm going to show you real quick. With this mask, I put a gradient in the center here because if I take this off, you can just see. You can see that the center area of this scene is kind of dark. So just adding a little bit of a gradient mask and adding some exposure to it helps us to really get some more life in that space. And that's it. So thank you all again for joining me on this image breakdown. I hope you all found it informative. And remember, this isn't the rule. I just wanna share with you guys my approach as to when I'm on site shooting, editing, and delivering the final photos to my clients. Hopefully you guys have learned some tools and tips that can help your own craft for yourself and for your clients to become a better photographer and delivering a better quality of photos for your own clientele. And make sure guys to like and subscribe. I have a whole bunch of videos coming this year in 2023. And mark your calendars, we are officially 11 months away from this year's PMRE conference. I hope to see you all there, but until then guys, keep on shooting and I'll see you all soon.